today. And I want you to turn with me this morning to the book of 1 John, chapter 5. I'm glad I am free today. I'm yes. glad the sun set free today. Yes. I'm glad yes. I'm free today this morning. Yes. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. You know, today they say this is a lot of the cultists and a lot of the people, uh, they say this is the devil's holiday. But day is the Lord's day. Every day is the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I'll tell you something. I know I pre have preached this in a long time. I, not, not what I'm preaching now. I preach a message about Halloween. And you, if you knew what it all meant, you would have tell you had a party, the parties, the celebration. Would he put some of your decorations if you really knew what it was all about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Preacher, I'm not a legalist. I believe you know the truth. You ought to practice it. You ought to avoid it. Eric, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You may preach you a legalist. No, I'm not. Listen. I'm just a realist. Well, I, Amen. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm glad today we're going to have service tonight. We ain't going to go trick or treat. Yeah. We're just going to come, pray the chef, pray God. That's Amen. 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 Let's just remember the service tonight. Be here tonight. And let's remember that. You know, remember the deeds that's not here. Some are not here because it, they could be here, but they're not. But they some is sick, not even be here. Let's pray for them. But that's message tonight today. It's been buried on my heart for the last little bit. It's a very simple thought. It's a very elementary and very, very basic principle of the doctrine of the Word of God and the gospel. But it's a, it's a gospel. It's, it's a doctrine which I believe. I'm with all the fiber of my mind. I believe it, and I'll believe it till I go home to be with Jesus. Amen. And that's the doctrine of eternal security. I believe you're eternally in Christ. Yeah. But this morning, if you look with me in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, I want you to stand when you get to, you get to your place. We're going to read three verses today, and then we're going to pray and ask, you, ask God to help us. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this, is, and this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Father, we yes. do ask you today, God. Yes, Lord. As we preach this today, Lord, we're not doubting your leading. But God, we ask you, God, we know God, for within purpose you've got to preach it in yes. today. Yes. And I do ask you right here and now, God, yes. that Father, those that are here, and Lord, I look across the congregation this morning. And God, everybody in this building has professed, professed faith, their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But God, we know that you still want us to preach this. God, there's a possibility someone here has missed the mark. There's a possibility, Lord, that maybe someone here that really has not experience the new birth. God, we have so sad someone here that few, a few months ago raised their hand, they were lost. And they're here today. We ask you, God, right now, if you would help us this oh, morning. Lord, Lord, Lord. And we preach your word yes. that God, you convict that person. Yes, Lord, help yes. But God, this morning, I pray there won't be no interruptions. Yes, I pray Lord. those that like to get up and go to the bathroom do service unless God is absolute necessary. Keep them seated, Lord God. Yes, Lord. May God anything that may hinder this message from being preached. Yes, blood I pray blood God you just help us in the blood yes, of Christ. Yes, Jesus, we proclaim today over this service. Now God, do the work today in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. I used to work with a woman years ago, back toward Rachel, back in the early, late 70s. The woman was a primitive Baptist. You know anything about primitive Baptists? They believe in, they, they, they don't go to church but one time a month. They have a lot of Baptists, independent Baptists that don't do that. Amen. <laughs> but I used to say, boy, well, I'm so glad I'm saved. She said, well, how do you know you're saved? 
I said, because my Bible says if I put my trust and my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then I'm saved. Yes. And we see here in this picture this morning, we need to look at something here. <laughs> I know today that I'm going to heaven. There's no doubt. Amen. I'm just as sure in heaven as I'm standing behind the pulpit in this church this morning. But let me tell you one thing, friends. People can really know that they're saved. <laughs> and they're heaven bound. I'm going to ask you a question. Look at me. Look, I, I don't want everybody to look at me. I don't want everybody being peeling around, looking around, and keeping the attention off of me because this is a serious matter this morning. I'm going to ask you something this morning. Do you know for sure that you're saved? You don't have to say, I hope so. You don't have to settle for me and say, I hope so. I'm saved. I hope. Or maybe I'm saved. You can have that assurance in your heart that you are saved. Yeah. You would be, be surprised, and then I know what I'm talking about. I've been preaching long enough. Time. No, I don't know it all, but I know a little bit. You'd be surprised that the people that sat in their pew on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and wrestled with having the assurance of their salvation. Yeah, amen. You'd be surprised. But we see here we can have a real assurance of our heart and soul. So, you know what? John was writing this letter here to the Christians so they could have the assurance of knowing they have eternal life. You've got to realize that the New Testament church here, that during this time there were a lot of the Judaizers, which was the one that were had uh, tried to mix law with grace. That's what the Jew, the Jewish people who said you couldn't be saved unless you kept the law. That's what Judy, uh, uh, Judaizer was. So they had many people to that, many Christians or many Jews or many even Gentiles at that time had been saved. But they, they, those Judaizers had got to the point that they were trying. They were sowing doubt in the hearts and minds of those that were saved. So John wrote this letter to tell them, say, Lord, that you can really understand and believe and know without any doubt or assurance that you're saved. <clears throat> you know what? That first of all, I'll tell you something. Having doubt don't really mean that you're not saved. I know I believe everybody in this building, and I'm talking about me too. I believe some of you've been saved a short time, some of you've been saved a long time. But they might be the time once in a they might be the time the devil will try to lead you down for salvation. But that don't change the fact you're standing before God. Yeah. But we see here as we read here in the scripture this morning, some people have doubt. See, one thing about it. The devil can cast a shadow of doubt over you over your mind. If he can get you doubting, he can rob you of that assurance that you know you have eternal life. Right. It's your can. Mm -hmm. Assurance is help is a healthy thing for Christians. If I didn't know that I'd be saved tomorrow, how could I rejoice in the grace of God? Amen. Amen. If I didn't know that I was kept eternally by Christ Jesus, how could I stand up and sing victory in Jesus? Amen. 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 How can I stand and say I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one? Yeah. So we have assurance of that. But let me tell you one thing, friend, when you lack assurance, amen, you lack confidence in yourself and in God. It's important to have assurance today. Now I'm not trying to get you to make another profession. I'm trying to. I'm just. I know what I'm supposed to do right here. I know what I'm supposed to be preaching. Bless the Lord. One thing of it, folks. That when you die, it ain't the end. It's the beginning, really. Yeah. And it's going to be a beginning either in heaven or it's going to be in hell. One or two. That's right. Which one, you, where you go, depends on what you do with Christ. There's a lot of folks that have got hung up. Look, this is true. Now, I know what Trump said to me down. Too many people have got caught up in the emotional part of a service and they call profession. Am I right? Yeah, man, true. 
Too many people have had copycat salvation. It's like that preacher. Well, you see a brother or sister in Christ, they see a relative or sister one they look like, they get saved, and they want to be in with them so they, get to, they make a profession. Yeah. My friend, you cannot ride no one's coattails into heaven. You've got to get in by and only through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. We need to be absolutely sure that we're going to heaven. I know I'm I know yeah. I'm there. Amen. I remember one time, I was, one time, and I and I as a preacher, years ago, the devil set on me. And he put a doubt on me that about destroyed my faith. One thing about it, friend, you know you can't get your soul if you're saved, but of course sure can defeat you and put you in such a doubtful way that you will do something uh, uh, out of the spur of the moment that you'll regret the rest of your life because you're discouraged. Yeah, man. So I'm going to preach today on the subject, how to be saved and know you're saved. There you go. How to be saved. Like I said today, in my prayer, someone years and several months ago raised your hand, they were lost. They wouldn't raise your hand, they were saved. And I repeated it twice or three times, and they would raise their hand. And they've made profession here at the church. So I'm telling you what, friend, we need to understand and see this today. There's a way to be saved and know it. First of all, how did the person obtain salvation? How did they get saved? Do they just go to the altar and pray a prayer? Or do they get in the baptistry pool and get baptized? Or do they do a good do a good deed and do good works? No, it's not how it is. How do they get saved? The Bible in 1 John 5, 1, in the text we read you, tells us who that believe that Jesus is the Son of Christ, the, is born of God, and he, everyone that loveth him, he that beget uh, him that beget loved him. Also is the God of him. It's one simple way is to the simple belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. A lot of people use their, use their experience as get out of a hell, a hell free card. A lot of people are you be surprised, friends. All the years and when I preach here and other churches. Well, you had people get yourself in a mess, maybe, uh, maybe uh, a mess, a domestic mess, or some kind of illegal mess. They'll run to God's house, they'll sit on the altar, get on the altar, and make that false profession when the smoke clear. Yep. And back out in the world. That's good, preacher. Yeah. <laughs> but salvation is obtained through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? He was the promised Messiah. He is the Son of God. The Bible said He came in First John uh, 11 and 12. He came in His own, His home received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them it gave Him power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. But let, being saved is not a mental thing. You got it? You ever understand? Being saved is not in your mind. They, many people have had knowledge but not heart knowledge. Amen. It's yeah. not in the mind God said it's with the heart. That's right. So we see here, salvation here, amen, is, is the promised Messiah, but it ain't mentally to the facts. The Bible said in James 2, 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devil also believe in tremble. But it's also absolute commitment to God. For by grace are you saved, or you saved through faith, that not yourself any of the gift of God, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2 and 8. Also said in Acts 16, 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thou have. John 6, 47 said, Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Salvation don't listen to me. Listen to me this morning. Salvation does not come on the basis of your action, but it comes on the basis of your faith. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Amen. On your faith in Christ's action on the cross. But I'll tell you one thing we need to understand this today. So many people have 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 done it there. Well, you can't do it your way. He's been the way it all. That's right. So we see here we read here that so it don't come on the basis of our action, but on the action. And we have faith in the action of Christ, what he done on the cross. 
You can't depend on the best 15 minutes of your life you have. How about the emotional high? Or you say, boy, I got it. But you know what? Well, if it's like that, it ain't gonna last it too. Emotionalism has sent a lot of people to hell. Amen. 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 A lot of people have hinged on the emotional side, of, and I, I thank God to get saved. I like to run the praise God for some time. But I don't save me, my friend. If what happened on my heart, in my heart, April 12th, 1978, that saved me. Yes. And my faith in Him, and only in Him, to get me to heaven. The Baptist church ain't going to get you there. No Baptist preacher's going to get you there. No creed's going to get you there. No creed's going to get you there. It's just got to be the cross in Christ. Amen. Amen. That's good, brother. Bless you. Yeah, I ain't saying because of it, ever, anything I've done, but it's pure faith and pure grace. Picture grace like this, like God, like God reaching down and, and saying, I love, I love you and want to save you. Thank you. That's good, amen. Thank you. Picture faith, picture faith that you reaching up to God and saying this, I want to be saved. I believe what you said about Jesus in your word. Salvation only comes to those who put their own faith in. So you may put faith. You may you might have been crying one night in and, and, and emotional agony. And you got on the altar and you well, but you know what? Them tears did not save you, friends. That's right. That's what happened on the inside. Amen. Old drunk goes to the bar, belly's up to the bar, he'll drink, crying, drop. That don't make it no more saved. He's still a drunk. Amen. That's right. Amen. I mean, I believe when you get saved, there'll be tears of joy. That, uh, I believe you will. But one thing about it, friend, we can't base it on our tears. Right. We can base it on our faith in Jesus Christ, and that's all. Nothing else and nothing more. That's right. exactly what it is. Yes, sir. But we see here today. The Bible says, if you're here today, you're saved. We have no works. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. In other words, you don't work to get saved, but you can get saved. You, you, you work because y'all saved. Too many people say, well, I, I'm a member of Unity Baptist Church, or I belong here, and I've been here a while, and I pay my tithes, and I come to church, and I do what I can in church, good and fine. I'm glad you do. But I say, well, how is your, your relationship with the church? Maybe good, but what's your relationship to Christ? Yeah, yeah. that's right. What's your relationship to the Lord? Let me tell you what, there are too many people, amen, they, they count on so many other things to get them in. And they say, well, I made that emotional experience. I came to the altar, I left. I've been baptized in, in the creek on the baptistry pool. I'm, I'm doing well. But you know what? You lay your head down at night. Oh, you hear about a message about the saints coming to Jesus Christ. Oh, you hear about the CD saints going on in the world we're living in today. And there's a fear that comes over me. I'll tell you what, you know what? It used to be me like that. Yeah. But now I know one thing as the clock ticking closer to midnight strike. Yeah. Amen. 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 <clears throat> does the thing concern you, preacher? It does. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I don't know what's going to come our way, but I don't know who's going to come get us from that. Amen. 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 So we see here, I'll ask you a question this morning if you trusted him and him alone. You need to look at me. You need to look at me while I'm preaching. You don't need to get your eyes off nothing else. But I'm going to tell you what, one thing about you need to understand this one thing. If you die and go to hell, you'll remember this message too bad. Amen. 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 That's the truth. I believe right now in hell. I believe Jeff says I am playing through with hell. Mm, yeah. And people remember the night that they rejected Christ yeah. for the last time. Okay. Preach that ain't scripture, but our Bible, according to my Bible, we have our vision. The people have their vision, they have their sight, they have their hearing. All five senses in hell. Yeah. Amen. According to the Bible. <clears throat> Many people say, well, preacher, I'll take my chance. I'd better take my 38 at home, put one, one, bullet in the, one bullet in the chamber, flip it down and put, stick it to my head and pull a trigger and take a chance of it. And I had to rely on my works to get to hell. Amen. Good That's good, brother. Blessings. Now we see how we, 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 how the person, how they, how they obtain salvation. How do we have that assurance of salvation? But I'll tell you, how do we have that assurance of salvation? I, you, know, you don't be surprised 
It's a fact. That the people, if you really, they be really honest. And the people that felt completely sure they're saved. You see, James, the book of first, the book of first John was written to the Christians to give them assurance of their salvation. John uses the word no almost 40 times in this short letter he wrote in his short, the short letter or chapter. You know why another point he wants us to really know that we're saved. I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to get you back to another profession. But if you're saved, good. But I believe somebody may need this this morning. Yeah. Amen. John give us three basic tests that we can take to determine or not if we've been born again. And I'm going to tell you what they are today. First of all, we give the Lordship test. Is Jesus Christ, listen to me now, is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Do you put Him first and foremost above everything? Above family, above all? Do you do that? That's the Lordship test He gives us. Does He control your life? 1 John 2, 3, and 4. And hereby we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. Well, that, what does that mean, preacher? It means this. In the heart of a child of God, of a Christian, there will be a desire to do the will of God. Too many of us if it, uh, we get in His way a lot of time and stay, instead of staying in His will. The, you know what? That's the person that could care less about what uh, God thinks. They, when they, when they care less about what God thinks about where they live. That, that's a good shit for sad loss. They live in, 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 in a life of denial, a complete defiance of God's word. I'm going to tell you what, when I got saved, when I got in, I wanted to do what I could to please Him because He's saved. Yeah. Amen. Do you always please Him? I'm afraid to say I don't, and you don't need to. That's right. But one thing about it, the Holy Ghost gets me when I don't. Amen. Amen. The Amen. Holy Spirit shows me when I don't. Yeah. I want to be what, let me tell you what, this is my life. It ought to be your life. Every, Preaching and pastoring and being a chance all my life has been there for 40 some years. Yeah. But you got folks that don't really care where they come to church. Not. Listen to me now. Listen, listen. You got a crowd that don't care where they come or not. They ain't saved. They ain't saved. They're not saved. It basically, I'm not somebody needs to say it. They're not yeah. saved. That's right. right. Amen. Now I can understand it. People get back to it on God. And they get out of church, but they some. Somewhere along the line, if you want a God judge him, he's going to take that, but take that hickory out. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. And you'll either get right or God will put you in the ground. Yes, that's right. Amen. That's right. That's good, brother. That's the word, amen. Bless him. And if God don't deal with you about your life, there's a chance you never know him as your Lord. That's good. Amen. Amen, brother. That's the truth. Bless him, Jesus. Those that are born again will have as their hearts to desire to obey and please God. That don't mean you're going to not fall short. Just because you fall. The Bible said we all seem to fall short of the glory of God. But I'm talking about these folk that say, well, I'll go to church when I get, if I have an opportunity. If, if I can. If I got one to go somewhere and miss services, what's the big deal? You know what big deal is? Oh, 2,000 years ago, a man came to call Jesus. Yes. He drug a cross up Calvary. Yes, he did. He was beaten. He was, he was beaten beyond recognition. He was crowned with a crown of thorns. He was beaten with plucked out of his face. He, shed, he was nailed to a cross. And he bled and died when we could have eternal life. Amen. And he made the way possible for you to get saved. Amen. Yes, he did. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. And when you get saved, your, your gratitude to Christ ought to be, Lord, I want to serve you. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Where there's no gratitude, yes. there may, yes. may not be no, no profession. Yeah. 
His branch will help him. I want to tell you what, friend. A lot of folks get distracted and stray off course. But if you're really saved, you'll recognize your error and you'll get straightened out. Yes. That's right. I often say, I heard old preacher say, sure enough. How do you get off track with God? What you got to do is get back when you jumped off and get back on there. Mm -hmm. Remember Jacob had that son of God? What he had to do? He had to go back to Bethel with his little daughter of God. Where he made that commitment to Christ and he got a will of God. He went back to Bethel. Hey, some people need to go back to that, don't you, man? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you what, but if we understand this in this this morning, amen, some will get distracted, some will stray off. And I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm saying that they, if they are saved, God's going to chasten them. Yes, amen. I, got a, I, have, a, I have a relative that's, that's in a, I don't even like to say that word. But they're living the wrong lifestyle. I put a lot there because I, I don't want to be too plain. Yeah. And the other girls just said, I think they're saved. <laughs> you know what I told them? <laughs> I said, but if they are, God will whoop them. Yep. If they're not, there's one other conclusion, only one other conclusion that you can come to. They've never been saved. Yes, yeah, right. I don't know if you understand this. I don't understand this. Somebody help me. <clears throat> How that I can do one thing? I could do something to grieve God and God deals with me. And another Christian could do the same thing and God get up bother. Yeah, that's good. That's right. Can you understand? Can you explain that yeah, to me? That's good for good. Yeah. I believe it means he's not having that nothing to convince. Uh, yeah. Right, man. I believe it means hey, hey, man made a profession, but they they had possession. They ain't possessed Good praise. Yeah. You see, a lot of people today don't understand the concept that you just don't say, Lord Jesus, save me, and go ahead and live your life and say, Lord, hey, I, I got a private license for the state of North Carolina. Amen. But I ain't got me to give me a reason to go out on the street and run over people and kill them and do everything. And they don't give me a reason yeah. to kill them and do that along with it. And yeah. you get saved by the grace of God. They don't give you a license to go out and see them. Listen, try to good man. Listen, we'll help them. Help them. I ain't talking about being perfect. We ain't none of us perfect. Amen. We need to strive to be the best we can for God and we're saved. Yes. That's right. Don't you think? You want to do the best you can. Yeah. When I got in high school, I was interested in one thing. Girls. <laughs> he, but if I wasn't interested in girls, you know why I wouldn't? I, I guarantee you wasn't interested in boys. <laughs> but I could have done better in school if I'd have got my mind off that. Yeah. Don't look at me like I'm perverted or something. Y'all was just bad at worse than I was. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to say, I didn't I couldn't reach my full potential in school because things distracted me. And a lot of people today they're saying that they can't reach that full potential of serving God because they allow all kinds of distractions. Yeah, amen. And they're not they asking God to help. Oh, that's good. That's good. We're not saved by keeping the commandments, but we are marked with a desire to please God. The Bible said in John 3 20, for 1 John 3 24, he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth, he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he had given us. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Now we see here, we've read about the Lordship text. But are we going to see something else? The fellowship text. <clears throat> John said in 1 John 3, 14, he says, You know that we pass from death to life because we love the brother." He that loveth not his brother abideth in death tonight. When you get saved, if you're saved, you got a genuine love for God, you love God's people. Yeah, yeah. That's the truth. You love God's people. And we need to understand that today we have a desire to love God's people. And that's our honor to be your desire here today in this church to love God. But I'll tell you one thing, friend, there'll be a genuine love for God and for his church. I love this church. I love this church. I want a lot that I got saved. 
I love to go, but hopefully when we can get it. I love coming in to our church, have service, hear these all you five people sing, and boy, bless yes. my heart. I love to hear your testimonies. I love to see God yeah. move, and I like to get in this pulpit and preach like a madman. Hey, man. Yes. Hey. Hey. I love it. Where? Well, I've got saved. I learned to love the things I hated, and hate the things I love. Yes. Amen. Hey. Hey. Bless it. There'll be desire for unity. You know what? When you, you know why I believe by the Lord a lot of these churches are tearing up and because God got a bunch of goats and other sheep. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. Well, the last thing you can't get along, one of us ain't right with God, both of us ain't right with God. Amen. That's right. It's the word. Amen. Bless the Lord. A lot of these folks have, these church, a lot of these churches, they, they, they change the preacher like <laughs> changing your clothes. Yeah. Like Amen. They can't get along with nobody. Yeah. And they say, and you know one thing, friend? Lord, I, I, I told you the other day, in, my camp, in the county I was born and raised in, they were 16 Southern Baptist churches out of a preacher. They can't keep one. Mm -hmm. What ever happened to a church stop loving God enough and loving God's man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wanting to back. Whatever happened? Yeah. And you know what? Most of the problem in the church is not by the not by the converted church members, but those that are unconverted because they've never been born again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They're preaching. Hey, I know I preach things sometimes. You may not like but I do it for your own good, but you never give me trouble. You get it right with God. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 That's the way it ought to be, ain't it? Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. I don't want like to take all the mess and I take, but I know I got to take it because I know I don't. It ain't going to feel good. That's right. Amen. That's good. That's good. But let me tell you what, that's the fellowship. The fellowship camps. We need to see that. And 1 John 4, 21, it said, In this commandment we have from him, that he that loveth God loves his brother, loves his brother also. Yes. 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 There will be a desire for peace. Yes. I'm going to be around a bunch of mm -hmm. yeah. If I ain't helping, I ain't going to be around a bunch of yeah. Right, yeah. man. If you ever get a part of this church to try to run me out, hey, I, hey, praise God, I know, I know what 24, 27 is. I don't know what Troy, North Carolina, I don't know what to love me, man. Amen. Because let me tell you what, friend, we need to understand being in unity. I love to be what unity is. Yes. Yeah. You don't always get that in our church. Yeah. That's right. Brother Mike, when I come back from that funeral you know, yesterday, Brother Phil, I thank God all the way down the road for being in Baptist church. Praise God. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. You don't know what you got to give you somewhere. Amen. 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 That's right. I, you know what? Because I believe if you say you don't want unity. Yeah. Yes. This crowd don't always want to fuss and cuss around stuff. They ain't right with God. Yeah. Right. You ever been somebody so cantankerous? Even the devil can't stand them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about those that said they're saved. Yeah. Only can take look like a mule eating plums, amen. Yep. <laughs> Don't ever smile. I've seen I have seen them come in before. I didn't know whether to shake their head or run for the light for my life. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be a love for God and for his children. I love you. I love you. I love I, you, you ask anybody anywhere I go, I brag on our church because I, I love my people. Yes, yes. They're not perfect people, but I ain't a perfect preacher. But we got a perfect God in yeah, unity. Yeah. And let me tell you one thing about it. When you get saved, you don't want to be in unity and you don't want to strive in company. Amen. <laughs> you know what the Bible said in Hebrews 10 25? It said, Not forsake the sin of yourself, not forsake the sin of ourselves together, as a matter of something, but exhort one another so much more as you see that day approaching that word. Exhort means to encourage one another. Amen. Can I tell y'all something? I need your encouragement. And you need my encouragement. Amen. Right. Because we get beat down enough in this world outside. Yes, we do. We do. All this mess going on. See, these boys dressing like girls and girls dressing like boys. It makes Ooh. God want to throw up. I Amen. Go up town, I tell you, I ain't never in my life seen such a mess. In the summertime, that's God, you have to wear it. You have to wear it. You have to go in blindfolded sometimes. If you don't, yeah. you see a sight you don't want to see. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're living in wicked times. I'm going to tell you one thing we need to understand. We need encouragement. Ain't been time. Y'all don't even know there's been time. I've been in the church. I hadn't even felt like being here because I've been so down. And somebody come up and encourage me. Well, God, 
people got back me up preaching and God gets a hold of me. And when I leave here, I'm ready to go another mile. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Amen. But a man that said a, a person that ain't been saved, that don't give them about no unity in the church. Yeah. Right. Love will characterize the true Christian. 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. There'll be times, and there will be times, that there'll be misunderstanding between Christians. There'll be the disagreements. But Christian, we cannot, true Christians won't allow these things to run. That's why that Bible talks about. If you go to the altar to the procedural gift, and you know that brother some or sister got something against you, said before you present that gift, you, you go to that brother or sister, get it right, then come on the altar to God. Some people have forgotten to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Some people, you know, there's some men and some women that's married to each other. They won't say they're sorry. Wow, good husband, you better learn. When you mess up, you better learn to tell your wife, your husband, I messed up and I'm sorry for you. Ain't going to be that. Go ahead, they be like that. But if you say, by the grace of God, God got you. God got you. You're going to have to end up. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. There's got to be, uh, there's got to be also, we, we talk about, a, we've got to be a relationship test too. How's your relationship this morning with Christ? It's a vital relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ being saved. The Bible never tells us to point back to some experience to determine the status of your soul. What it does, it says, look at your current relationship with God. What God's done for you. What's your, what's your stand before God this morning? Now you may have made, you may, I may have baptized some of y'all. I, I may have, I, I may have, you may have come this order and I may have led you to God or went through the motion to lead you to God. But are you sure? I know you've got to be 100% sure you're saved. You've got to know that more than you know your name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Good right. preaching. Yeah. Don't, try, don't base your faith on a little emotional experience or a little tear jerker you had. Don't know it. You've got to base it on your faith in your relationship yeah. with Christ. When I got saved, I got changed. My vile mouth was shut. Yeah, yes. My days of going places and doing things that I once did was through with. My desire for the world is not for more. Oh, I love, you know how I know I love, I, I know how I love to go, I love to go. I love God's people. You get saved, you're going to have a love for the church and God's people yes. that, that surpasses it all. Yeah. Yes. I remember. Mm -hmm. I got saved. I was, I'd go to church once in a while before I got saved. But I'd go one time and go back for months and months or something like that. When I got saved, I felt the diff it was. Yeah. I couldn't wait to go back to church. Hey, 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 <laughs> a pretty, I had a man come to church and go, it's true, it's true, he's dead now, he's dead, I'm afraid not. He made a profession, but somebody went and got him in the tent, wrong that altar, he got made a profession. And I don't like that, I think that's not, I don't think God pleased the man doing that. I don't believe God, leave God. Leave people alone, let God do it. That's right. Yeah, man. But he come to this church on Wednesday night, never came on Wednesday night at all. Never had been on Wednesday night, long night past it. I never forget to say what Jared said. Jared and uh, Mr. Grace is saying that. And he's why. And I was being friendly. I'm a friendly person. I went back there and shook his hand and said, Brother, it sure is good to see you in church. Hey, God, I didn't have nothing else to do. I thought I'd come and hear you run your mouth for a while. <laughs> if I ever thought about it, 
Eye for an eye, two for two, I did that then. But I walked off, and what showed me? He didn't care about coming to church. Yeah. He didn't care about coming to church. Of course, he blew out. I preached him out about a few months later. I have a way of doing that somehow. But <laughs> well, God does. I put my hand. Yeah. Folks, take something. I know my relationship with Jesus Christ is eternal. I know I'm yeah. I, Let me tell you what. If you they call you this evening and tell you, Brother Ricky and the family of the dead down in his house. Oh, Brother Ricky had a wreck on the way to get lunch and dead. Don't believe it, because I'll be in another land. Ooh, my body. Yeah. I'll be coming. I know. I know. I want you all to promise me this. If I go before you, won't you make this promise? Look for me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm not sure it's in well no. I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded yes, that he's able to keep me yes. until that day. Amen. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. Y'all know you're married, don't you? Amen. Amen. If you don't, your wife will remind you once Amen. 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 I know I'm saved. Yes. I'm not a perfect Christian. But I know I'm a saved. Yes. How's your relationship with your wife and husband this morning? How is it? Is he your friend in Christ, your friend, your companion? Or is he someone you've heard about? But dad really never got to know him. No. If he's ready, you'll never answer, folks. I'm not asking you the question. If not, did you, do you, did, did, did you believe in Jesus? I'm asking, are you believing in him? Yeah. Christ ain't like the light switch. You can't turn him off. Your relationship is eternal. I was brought up as a young boy. Believe it, I could lose my salvation. Mama, mama drug us to all kinds of different churches. They spoke in tongues. It scared me to death too. <laughs> and I thought when I first and when I got when I got to date my wife, is she going to do a good run on the church? And I told her one day I about losing my salvation. And I'm glad she had known enough of Bible to tell me, so you can't do that. And I, I began to read in my Bible. I didn't take other words. I read my Bible and said, you have eternal life. What does eternal mean? Anybody tell me? Forever, yeah, really. don't That means it can't be changed, can it? Yeah. Nobody today can have joy in their heart. If they had got assurance in their soul, they're saying. Amen. Amen. This young this preacher one time, an older preacher. He wasn't too emotional preacher, but he's a good man of God. This preacher that had took his shirts there after he retired, he went to him one day, he was about to die. He's in there. He was sitting there in his house and just about to die for the film. He talked to the old preacher. He said, Preacher, I said, you know about Red Cross? So he said, Yeah. He said, Preacher, will you do me a favor? He said, He told that old preacher, will you do me a favor? He said, Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, When you get to heaven, will you tell Jesus I said I loved him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 that ain't the best of it. That ain't the best of it. They said it that night after that. Now, this preacher, he told me, I was kind of emotional, an unemotional. And they said about, about, about 1 o'clock in the morning that an unemotional preacher got out of and got a shout. Praise the God. <laughs> right after he got a phone call, that road crossed over. <laughs> what happened? He told them. Jesus <laughs> that preacher. <laughs> oh, <woo. laughs> yeah. mm. Adam, yeah. Woo! Well, good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm glad today. I've never seen him face to face.
but I trusted him by his grace. One day I'll stand in his presence and fall in his nail scar face. Yes. Yeah. And thank him for saving my soul. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. When I first got saved, a lot of times my faith was like a roller coaster. What's yours sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes when I first got saved, the devil, he first, you first get saved, the devil will fight you. He'll make you doubt sometimes. He'll yeah, make he you will. Will. Oh, yeah. Then that night, that final thing that nailed you to the coffin, the devil about had me convinced. No. But I said, I finally said, come on, devil, won't you go with me? Mm -hmm. I want you to go with me to old, to old, old two T. Oh, 220. I want you to go to a little white church that day, that night. Mm -hmm. Preacher, I said, they will come with me up here. Mm -hmm. I want you to, right there on the altar. I want you to, and I want you to, I want you to know about April 12th, 1978, mm -hmm. that I asked Christ to save my soul for 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I've never had no problem saying that. Amen. Amen. Because I know that I am saved. Yes. Had a man sing in our church. You can be the bad church. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of you know who it is. He got up one day. He used to sing in church. Him and his wife. Little did I know he fed fall like cat and dogs all the time. He did. One day, God got the Holy Spirit. You know what he said? And I'm not the Holy Spirit. I don't claim to be nobody. No more spiritual you are. But he stood up that here. He said, I was lost. He turned back to me. He said, I know you do. I was lost. <laughs> well, think about it. I'm not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I don't know that much inside you are. But God does. Amen. Do you, do you know? How do you know you're saved? It's because you know you have been saved because you passed from death unto life. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know how I know I'm saved? Because God says I'm saved. Yeah. Yes. And I am. I want to ask you something this morning. Like I said, yes. I was sitting over there, Brother Mike said, check for a second. I was sitting, I was, I said, oh, are you sure? Are you sure, God? He said, I want to tell you something. There will be times in your life that you may doubt. <laughs> but there will also be a time that God will confirm it to you. <coughs> One and five. Yes, he will. That's all we have. Yes. But I want to ask you this morning. Did you get saved because God deal with you? Did you get saved because somebody pressured you to get saved? Mm -hmm. Or make profession, let me go back and rephrase it. Or did you get saved because that night the Holy Spirit dealt with you, that morning the Holy Spirit dealt with you, and you realize once it fall, that you're saved. I want to tell you something. Everybody that's really born again, they got a testimony on top of that. Mm -hmm. And some people can't give you a clear indication when God did say it. Mm -hmm. They'll say, well, I got saved here. They can't tell you no much more than that. Mm -hmm. But I can tell them exactly what happened to me. Yes, sir. I can tell them on Wednesday night about 8.30, 8.20 to 9 on, 8, on Wednesday night. When the Holy Spirit of God did my heart be saved. Yes. He been dealing me for a while. And when I knelt that night, brother, I made a lot of false profession. My brother, I did. That night was different. You know why? Because I wouldn't, I didn't go to all of it out of trouble. I wasn't going to all to get out of jail. I went to all because I'm going to get saved and stay out of hell. Amen. That's good. That night, it was said, God settled it all right there. Amen. It's settled, I'm saved, sealed, and one day I'm going to be delivered. Hey, yes. I'll ask you this morning. <coughs> Can you remember this about?
about that time or that, that, that experience you had years ago or just whatever it was. And you asked the Lord to save you. Can you, re can you remember when you got saved the change that came in your life? Have you, have you desired to be more and more like Him and become and be around God's people? Does it bother you that things you do bother God? Do you have a story to tell? Or do you, are you kind of fuzzy on the details? I have spoke to people, Brother Mike, and asked them, I said, you say this, and well, when they say that, you prove them on what answer it is now. Call the person say, they'll say, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember what it had. Yes, sir. I've had them say, well, I hope I am. Mm -hmm. I think I am. I say, but you know what? God can do that. No. Yes, right. Yes. Like I said, I don't know. This, everybody here has put fresh faith in Christ. And I know I'm going to lie in line. And God needs somebody to hear this message this morning. Somebody needs to come this morning and you say, Lord, I'm going to make it right today. Yes. And if you don't, and I, I know this more than I know my name. If you don't, if it, nobody responds, I know somebody gets laid off. Yep, that's right. Yep. And of all for your court. Mm -hmm. Because I done it when I was supposed to. Amen. Yes. By it. I want to yes, I want you to you really, really answer this truth. Preacher Ricky, I know I'm saved. There's no doubt in my mind. I know my name's written in heaven. Don't you say that by seeing the fight by raising your hands. I don't say, I know I am. You put your head down today. I'm going to pray a prayer. You need to come. Father, I come today. Lord, because I know that this is what you want. Lord, there's some